the games coming up Canada, right? We have uh, France announced officially now in the same week as the, the Dutch game. That's incredible. Um, suddenly, 2024 looks pretty good from a match standpoint for Canada. We'll, we'll get into that. And also the uh, the search for the, the new head coach, if there's a search or whether it's Morrow. We'll get Stephen's uh, thoughts on that as well. So let's bring him in, shall we? Stephen Hart. Stephen, welcome back to the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. And he didn't so, leave. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hardy, is it foggy out there? I, you know what? I was trying to <laughs> you have your window open. Going. I don't know what's going on with my camera here. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's trying to do everybody a favor and kind of blur my face. You've got <laughs> no wrinkles, Steve. You've got yeah. no wrinkles whatsoever. You're shiny out there. The Halifax yeah. fog was coming in. <laughs> well, that, that's a regular thing. So. It's Smoky the, lens. Uh, it's the old Vaseline trick, right? You put Vaseline in the lens. And it, I don't it know what it everything. is. I just, I just kind of noticed it when I logged on earlier. Either that or he hot boxes room. <laughs> oh <Nice>. boy, <laughs> Stephen. Anyway, listen to the important, <laughs> to the important stuff. Um, as I just mentioned, there, um, Canada have announced uh, another friendly, France, head of the Netherlands, head of Copa America. Will they play, of course, Argentina, Peru, Chile, maybe more? And then later in the year, USA, Mexico. So, so as a former coach, someone that knows this, this program inside and out, um, given the quality of those teams, do results actually matter? Or is it more performance showing progress for, for this group? Because they are they, they could lose all those games quite, quite possibly. Let's be honest. No, I think it's a performance thing, to be honest. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm a little I'm a little surprised of the the selection of opposition con considering we're playing sort of South American style teams for lack of a you know a better term um, even though you know everybody seems to play the same nowadays um, but yeah I'm a little surprised but those, those are great games and you're really going to get a measure of, of where you're at in terms of your performances. Um, Canada hasn't played games like that for, well, you know, if we put aside the World Cup, we, we haven't played any games like that at all, really. Um, so it's, it's an interesting matchup. Interesting is a good way to put it. It certainly is, right? I mean, let's be honest. These are major challenges. Um, and they're going to be fun for the fans, no, no matter. But the, the sidebar to this is they still haven't got a full-time coach. Um, Moro Biello is still interim manager officially. Is it important they get a full-time coach or determine whether it's Moro or not by Copa America? Or do you think they can, you know, just push through that and then address it later this summer? Well, I think a decision has to be made. Uh, you know, it, it'd be nice to have a full-time coach. You know, this, this is what we have. This is what we're we're going to be, you know, the project going forward because we already know we're going to be in the World Cup. You know, let's get on with it, you know. And and regardless of who it is, you know, make a decision and let the person go to work. It, it's not like the 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 team is is in camp or, or something at the moment. The, the, the players have to come in. Anybody, I mean, even Moro, he, he wouldn't know what he's getting. Um, it's the end of the season. Uh, it, it, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of hiccups. Players getting injured. Players tired, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and and he he'll have basically the same job on his hands. The only advantage he would have is he's worked with the players before. He's been with the squad a very long time. Um, my view is he, he qualified the team. Let him get on with it, and then make a decision. You know. Hardy, how, how difficult is it as a manager who has that intern position right now, who wants the job, who knows that uh, other candidates are getting interviewed right now? How What's what's the emotions going through Morrow's head right now? Well, that, that's a really good question. I mean, um, I've, I was the interim, I don't know, about seven times. I, I mean, seriously, I was the interim twice. And... Um, I really wasn't thinking about if I would get the job or not get the job. I was just thinking I got a job to do. And um, I'm going to get on with it in in, in my way. And I, I think he would probably have the same approach because 
it's it's completely out of his control um, if he gets a job or not. But we were talking earlier on, uh, Stephen, about those games, and you said performance probably matters more than results. But from Moro's perspective, if he's kept on as interim through those friendlies, through Copa America, the results do matter because it was an audition of sorts to get the team into Copa to see them through against Trinidad and Tobago, um, which I'm sure was difficult for you to watch in a certain regard. But um, the results will matter for Moro, right? Whether a decision's made after the, the tournament? Well, uh, he will certainly feel so. Um, when the question was posed to me, I, you know, I just gave the answer. I, I would like I would like to see performances because l let's face it, you know, and I've said it a, a number of times. Football is a bit of a lie. You 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 can perform very very well, and and not get a result, and you can perform poorly and get a result. You you know what I mean? So you know, are we going to say that uh, he goes into those games, performs poorly, gets a result here? you know, pulls off a tie here or something and then say, well, oof, good job. You know, I, I would like to see a performance uh, in, in how the team plays. Now, you know, us here who've been in the game a long time could look at a game and say, oof, you know, they, they did everything possible. Let's take the Belgium game in the World Cup, for example. You know, that was a, a really good performance as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, and uh, they didn't get the result. So, I don't know. It's six or one and half a dozen or the other for me. But I think you're right, Amy. It's, it's going to be a situation where he's going to be judged by the fans on the, on the results. You always are. When you look at the, the candidates for, for this job, right? Um, I know Frank Lampard withdrew his name <laughs> last week um, from, from apparently he had conversations with Canada Soccer, actually, according to some reports. Um, we had heard that that Thierry Henry would be open to a meeting as well at some point. Big names with very questionable CVs. When you compare those candidates, that kind of candidate, compared to a more established Canadian candidate, a Bobby Smyrniotis, a, a Tommy Wilden Jr. type of coach, who would be, you would think, more, more long-term, where do you sit on there right now? Is, is being a salesman like a, an Henri or a Lampard important? Or is it, let's establish the program here with someone that knows the landscape? Well, let's face it, guys. Lampard and, and Henri are theories. You know, it's not like they're coming in with a, you know, they, they've done national teams and done very well. And, you know, they, they're a theory. And um, it's it's more like uh, the, the, the name being presented and, and sort of quelling the noise of the of the fans and the, the football public than, than making a, a decision that's going to say, yes, this is the person that can do the job, you know? And then when, if it's a, if it's a local uh, name, uh, a Canadian name, the same questions are going to be, you know, what experience do they have? They haven't been around the national team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so again, the, 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 the names that are being brought forward, um, the, the, the Canadian coaches have a good idea, a good sort of understanding of the of the team, of the environment, of, of our culture and how we work. Um, and and then on the other end, you you have you have um, some 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 coaches being presented that are from backgrounds and environments that they're going to have a certain level of expectation about about standards and what is needed you know and that in itself brings a lot of a lot of problems uh, it asks a lot of questions of the association um, and maybe that's why some of them jump ship already <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, don't you think, I mean, there's a part of this too, that especially with uh, big names like that and Frank Lampard, his agent as well, these guys are, you know, throwing these names around and it's kind of hard to understand what is actually true and what is not, which this is sort of these agents trying to say, hey, listen, my guys suck, but there's still lots of people looking at them and they're really sought after. And this is why, you know, Frank Lampard makes a stand where I'm not going to you know, be, I'm not interested in the Canadian job right now, blah, blah, blah. It, it might not even be true, but uh, what do you think about 
tournament format and tournament experience as a coach. How important is that uh, when you're trying to get a team ready for a World Cup? Well, tournament format is, is big time. You know, I, I you know I had a chat with Jimmy about that. I've I've been involved in I think five, maybe more Gold Cups, um, and and that sort of tournament setting in itself carries with it um, not only some some detailed sort of of planning, but but an understanding of the changing of environments that you're going to go through um, in in playing in in the Copa America. Uh, so I, I think it's important that um, that the, the, the person does have some some sort of of idea about uh, about tournaments and and how to how to be in a, a sort of tournament setting. Um, if, if we if we look at, at Henri, for example, uh, he's he's been involved in uh, with Belgium, I think, in in a Copa, um, sorry, in a uh, Europa and. Uh, um, World Cup. World Cup. So he, he would have an understanding of that. But um, the, the way that the tournament is, is is set up, if we're talking about the Copa America, very much like the Gold Cup, jumping from city to city. And it's uh, it, it takes a lot, uh, a lot out of you. And, and not only that, it takes a lot of planning because your, your sort of rest and recovery and training sessions are, are squashed into such a, a tight time space. Um, you're, you're more sort of managing recovery, really, than, than preparing for games. How difficult is that to, when you're trying to prepare as a coach? For, when you're getting these players in just periodically, you have three or four days to prepare for a game. How difficult is that, really? If you're speaking about how, how I went about it, I, I try to always make players as comfortable as possible and relaxed as possible and do do everything to sort of take away the stress of, you know, having to, to, to jump on a plane and jump off a plane and then go to a different training ground and hotel, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's it's one of those things that it's you also need players that are comfortable with that sort you know that sort of environment. There, there's, there's there's some players and some countries that do not travel well. They do not deal with that very well, you know. And you end up in a situation where players just want to get it over with, you know. So it's it takes a lot of 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 man management, for lack of a better word, and. Uh, and really, the, the, the training and the, the preparation for each game um, is, is minimal in the sense that it's more a matter of you, you're hoping you get your selection right and, and they could carry out their individual roles and responsibilities. As, as Canadian coach, though, how much of the job is, besides scouting and, and coaching, is, is navigating that political landscape from the provincial level to the club level? Is it encompassing? Uh, it's probably like a minefield to me. <laughs> so, I was, I was in a, you know, I was in a very different time. You know, um, my my budget to run the entire program was less than a million, I think. You know, and that was everything: player salaries, games staff everything and uh i you know i wanted to have an an extra monsieur so physiotherapist i would have to drop somebody from the staff because they only allowed me to have nine or or ten staff and and i mean social media was just coming on on board then and people were like why does he need 10 staff you know (laughs) (laughs) now they have 20 something staff you know they've got a manager for the staff (laughs) <laughs> it's a very, very different, very different time time frame, and and just getting the most basic needs was, you know, it was a nightmare. But you know, you know, when I sat down with the staff, and I, you know, we, we used to say, look, this is this is the, this is what we have. Let's get on with it. You know, we, no moaning about it, and just try to make the players as as comfortable as possible because. 
a lot of the players, and, and well, I, I can only talk about my time, but it will be the same now. A lot of the players had um, standards that they were accustomed to. And when you are accustomed to certain standards, it's hard to go back. You know, <laughs> none of us here are going to go back to black and white TV or outside toilets for that matter. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not going to happen. I like a good outside toilet, but that's just called an alleyway <laughs> to me. <laughs> Ask Craig. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you, you, you know, it's it's one of those situations where I, I thought the players that I had dealt with it really, really well. They, they, you know, they would complain about certain things, but they understood that it, it was just not going to happen, and and they were just happy to represent the the country as as best they could. Uh, Stephen, I want to go back to what you said about. Lampard and Henri and those candidates, and you, you might think that we've already talked enough about those, those candidates or those roles for the, the full head coach job, but I love what you said about those names being a theory. And it makes me think sometimes of these studies that are done about, um, you know, heart conditions or these new diets, and you dive down into it after you get beyond the sensationalistic headline. And it was done on like 12 people and they just pulled some tiny line out of it and made that the headline. And I feel like that's what these appointments would be. It would be um, the shiny object. It would be a huge buzz. But then there would be the let off and the letdown afterwards because then you would come to terms with the fact that they don't have very much international experience as head coaches. They certainly had it as players, but it haven't been able to translate it into success as coaches. So do you think that there's a reluctance from... Canada soccer to put in the practical, sensible choice that would make sense in the long term. Do you think that there's a reluctance from them to do it or say from Kevin Blue's perspective to put somebody in that maybe doesn't get that headline, but when you dive deep into the article, it does make a whole lot of sense? Yes. <laughs> I think, look, social media is the, the biggest cancer that we have in professional sport at the moment. And if you're reading that, go for the popular one, you know, unless you are strong-willed, you know, you have a vision of, of what you want, and I'm going to go with that, support that person, and, and see how it goes. Because on the same token, Amy, I mean, one of those guys could come in and have success, have great success. You, you never know. <clears throat> um, I mean, John Hoodman and, and, and social media took a lot of stick when he was appointed. You know, let's let's face it. So, um, yeah, I, I think if you if you if you stay off those platforms, you you have good people around you that are not yes people that are people that are allowed to to say what they believe, and and uh, I, I think that would would help make you know, the best possible decision. Footy underscore prime on Twitter and uh, footy prime IG on Instagram. Make sure you uh, like and follow us on all social media <laughs> platforms. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, all right, Stephen. So this 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 team, um, I, I think some people might overrate it a little bit to a certain degree, but there's some significant talent on this side. I, mean, oh, I thought you were talking about us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, really not. <laughs> <laughs> there's some issues and character issues and there's, uh, <laughs> but when you look at the, the the quality on this team gosh what, budget management what, hey that i tell you what i gotta stop there forrest you killed me by the way when you went uh, as an agent my clients suck but i'm gonna put their name in the hat <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna comment about that but i let it, I let it slide <laughs> Don't let it slide, Steve. Don't let it slide. That's what our agent would be saying about us. These guys yeah. stink, but let's just put them out Doesn't, doesn't Forrest represent you, Jimmy? You're trying to get another yeah, head exactly. job? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put him up for the whales job. <laughs> so, yeah, so as I was saying, so obviously it's a team with some quality. There's no doubt about that. So we've seen some good performances, but although in fairness, not for some time. Um, what should the expectations be prior to Copa, do you think? Well, you know what, this this team, Ian, if you look at it from a coach perspective, it's, it's almost envious. Uh, you know, it has some quality. There's no doubt about that. There's a there's a few missing pieces, but I mean, which which team doesn't doesn't have that 
that sort of you know problem you 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 sort of hope that the balance is more towards good quality and you can cover up your 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 weaknesses you know um and uh, i mean yeah people are going to say the team is overrated they're going to judge them on their on their world cup performances they're going to judge them on 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 the, the, the jamaica games on the trinidad and tobago game etc but those games are more difficult than people give them credit for uh, craig and amy mm -hmm. and uh, jimmy they've, they've all played in concacaf you know and um they're you know they're in a situation where I, I i think they just need to to get that togetherness back again and that team can can have some 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 very good results and uh cause cause a lot of a lot of a lot of problems um but it remains to be seen who is actually selected who is there's a lot of factors involved we don't have a lot of of, of depth we have more than we used to have in the past, but we don't have a lot of depth in certain key, key positions. No, you're right. And we know the, where the quality is in, in that particular team. Do you think leadership is an issue since Atiba stepped aside? Um, Stefan Estacchio took the, the armband last match, and we know what he's done you know, in European football. Um, but Atiba was, was a leader of men, as they say, right? You know him very, very well. Is that how important is it to find that within that squad? I think it's extremely important. Um, you know, because as, as a coach, you depend heavily on, on leadership in the dressing room. <clears throat> and leadership comes in, in, in many different ways. Um, in, in, in my time, I had players that would lead, you know, by just the way they got out and performed. You know, they will not accept a drop in standards, right? And then you have you have people, you have leaders that are, are going to pull up on 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 behavior off of off of the field, behavior in the dressing room. And then again, you have, you have you have leaders that would simply carry out the instructions or make adjustments on the field. You know, uh, because most of the time, if you wait till half time, you're you're in you're in trouble, and you should um, have players that can can read the situation, make adjustments, and then justify it to you when when you when you when you come in at, at half time or even after the game. You know, it's it's essential. I've got a question about. Uh... A couple of weeks ago, Copa America qualifying, Steve, your homeland and your 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 chosen land were playing against each other. Yeah. How do you how do you watch that game? Who like are you are you you've got one flag on one side, one on the other, and you're chewing both sides of your nails? Or are you just looking for a great match? Not a chance, you know, popcorn and a beer. I mean <laughs> what kind of beer? <laughs> I actually don't drink beer, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was available. Um, but yeah, I you know I I don't really get that emotional over over the teams' planes. I I, I want to see I, I want to see a good game. I, I I want to be I want to be entertained. And I actually watched it with 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 a bunch of friends, all of them who, you know, they're. In one way or the other, none of us were born <laughs> were born here, um, and we're watching the game. And you know, it's it's a usual thing. Comments are flying left, right, and center. But I just wanted to see a, a really good a really good performance. And I, I knew, you know, I, I don't know the, the the Canada team very well in terms of knowing the players, but I knew the players from from Trinidad and Tobago because I'm not that long removed from them. Um, but but uh, I, I, I thought the game was tighter than I expected, to be honest. I haven't seen Trinidad and Tobago actually in that before for an awful long time. Uh, what's going on in that country? Because I, I, I texted Shaka Hislop and was like, 
what's going on? I've never seen a Trinidad and Tobago side. Like, where, where are all these great players that we saw for generations after generations? It just doesn't seem to be happening at the moment with Trinidad. No, it's a. Uh, I mean, they they're, they're struggling. They're struggling administratively. They're struggling in player development. Um, look, when when Trinidad and Tobago qualified for World Cup 2006, they had 26 players in the UK alone. We're not talking about Europe, just in the UK alone. Now they don't have one. Not one. There you go. You know, and they have one player in Europe. Uh, he was the, the, the player, arguably, that gave Canada the most fits, which is Garcia, you know. Um, but yeah, their, their, uh, their player development went off the rails some, some time ago, and um, they're struggling to, to, to pull it together. And it's difficult for, for countries like Trinidad and Tobago because uh, unlike Jamaica, they, they don't have the same, um, they, can't, they can't go and, 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 and get players that are, you know, sort of born in England or born abroad. Um, the citizenship, how you, how you get citizenship is, is, is a little more complex. Um, so that sort of keeps them back. All right, Stephen, uh, turn your coaching head on here. I want you to um, assume that you're taking the helm for Canada at Copa America, okay? Um, how do you set up against Argentina and Lionel Messi? <laughs> First to begin, if I knew how to to, to, to stop Messi, I, I, I wouldn't be on this podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> we still invite you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your people would say, no, he's busy. <laughs> I... Uh, I, I had uh, I had that opportunity to try and stop. Actually, he didn't score against he didn't score against us, so I'm proud of 